What's going on guys, this is Rob, and I will be at San Diego Comic-Con this year along with Mariah. So, if you guys wanna meet up uh, at 12 p.m. on July 21st, we will be at the entrance uh, to the San Diego Convention Center in front of Harbor Drive and Fifth Avenue. So, uh, hopefully we'll see you there. Okay, so in this video on Too Powerful for Marvel Movies, I actually wanna wrap back around to the first video we ever made here on my YouTube channel, and I wanna talk about Jason Wingard. Now, here's the thing. For those of you guys who saw Spider-Man Far From Home, Hey, it's Gordon, the editor. Uh, spoiler warning for Far From Home, so if you don't wanna hear that, uh, skip to this time code. All right, have a good day. Imagine everything that happened with Mysterio when he and Spider-Man had their first, like, battle with each other, but imagine that Spider-Man couldn't escape it, and that's Jason Wingard. Jason Wingard was a ridiculously powerful character. Now, admittedly, Spider-Man does have a spider sense, but here's the kicker about that, is I would argue, and, and this is probably a discussion I should have with Sal over at Comic Pop, since he's, like, the Spider-Man authority, but Spider-Man's spider sense only really ever seems to work if his mind, if his, like, mind and body are aware that something's not right. But when it comes to Jason Wingard, he manipulates the five senses, right? So he can make you believe believe that anything that you're seeing, touching, tasting, smelling, and hearing, that is absolutely real. If your mind and body don't know that things aren't the way they're supposed to be, there'd be no reason for you to, to believe otherwise, right? So I imagine Jason Wingard could probably get the upper hand on Spider-Man. I don't know if he ever has. I don't know if the two of them have ever fought. I think it'd be a cool battle and it'd be a cool question to answer. But when it comes to his character, he's kind of nuts. But the funny thing is that he's usually wildly underused by Marvel. When Jason Wingard first popped up, he was originally part of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants with Magneto, right? And he was just an older man who wore like this, you know, British looking cloak thing like an overcoat and he could manipulate the senses and that was it but when it was stanley and jack kirby storytelling back then it was pretty simple it wasn't really nearly as complex as like chris claremont or the stories that would come decades later right i mean stanley always kept things fairly lighthearted. but then you get around to like the dark phoenix saga right like the phoenix of the dark phoenix sagas when there is a device created by emma frost that amplifies the powers of jason wingard and then he's able to control the phoenix so because of that like it gets wild when it comes to his powers but that's why i say like for me i think he's probably one of the most dangerous people to have in the mc you. Because imagine, for example, that like something happens with the Avengers, right? I don't, I don't know what it is. Like, imagine the new Avengers movie pops off and Marvel introduces the Hellfire Club before they introduce the X Men, which kind of makes sense to be honest. But the Hellfire Club is this this organization that, that really kind of spans the globe, right? And the idea is to to really to acquire as much power and to influence the world as best they can. Now, within the Hellfire Club, you have what's called the Inner Circle. So that's where you find Emma Frost and Sebastian Shaw and Donald Pierce and Jason Wingard. But the Inner Circle named themselves after chess pieces right like black queen white queen black rook uh, white rook black king white king so on and so forth and so with that being the case if they introduce the hellfire club and they say okay so this is an organization that's trying to you know attain power and it really seems to be innocuous right like it's just something that happens somewhere like there's some tanker that's taken taken over by some rogue group you know like we saw in captain america the winter soldier and the new avengers respond and jason wingard happens to be there and then while the new avengers are going through and doing their mission then suddenly the entire tanker just changes right like this this the belly of this tanker with all these pipes and things you know when these soldiers running at him and so on and so forth suddenly it all changes and they're they're on this white sandy beach out in the middle of nowhere or they're in paris and like there's music playing children laughing and people are talking in french and people are talking in english and there's american tourists and they're taking pictures you know and, and they can feel the wind on their face they can reach down and touch the ground and it feels like the ground in paris like all this becomes absolute how can you defeat a foe when you don't know one where they are and two where you are right i mean how do you because here's the thing like it could be one of those things where like literally like the avengers call and they're like okay hey somebody like like shield come in or like somebody come and get us or whatever and like nobody answers and they have no idea where they are they could be wandering aimlessly for the rest of their lives for all you know for powerful on they are they, like presumably for eternity they could just wonder and wonder and wonder all throughout this entire place until their physical bodies give out all the while while they're experiencing all that right like being in paris and like tasting the food while they're experiencing all of that their bodies are basically just sitting in a cell in the brig of a tanker that's how jason wingard works that's how his power works it's crazy right it's just a manipulation of the five senses now if you take that entire concept and you capitalize on it by saying that those individuals who are at the mercy of mastermind's illusions are left to believe that like even though they know it's an illusion still have a hard time penetrating it uh then he becomes even more powerful right because in x-men number five uh really like the the second issue when he popped up because i want to say it was four when we got the brotherhood and then it was five when they all fought each other that mastermind actually created like an illusion of this brick wall and when he did like the x-men knew it was an illusion but they still couldn't pass through it right because their mind was telling him that's absolutely real it takes somebody of like prodigious skill in order to get past it 
it. But that's one of the things that makes him so dangerous. That's what makes him so capable is because going back to our example with the Avengers, even if they were walking through Paris and even if they knew it was an illusion, they wouldn't know how to escape. And it's not like they could like, you know, steal a jet somewhere and then just fly really, really far and then somehow reach the barrier of this illusion and pass it. The illusion would just go on forever and ever and ever, right? I mean, it would just keep going and going and going. The difference here in really the, the weakness of Mastermind starts to come into play when he starts to lose his concentration, right? Because he has to actually and, and actively focus on them. Now, there are ways to get around that. If we're talking about a scenario where like Mastermind's on the tanker and like he's manipulating the Avengers, tricking them into thinking that what they're seeing is real and they're just kind of running around this tanker or they're sitting down in the brig or, or whatever the case is. If like backup arrived, right? Like the X-Men showed up or something like that and they attacked the tanker and then Mastermind lost his concentration, even if it only flickers for a moment, it would give the Avengers the out they need and a way to escape the illusion and then get back into the real world, right? To actually actively engage in a battle with, with Mastermind and so on in the real world. But there are ways around that, right? So not even using the mind tap device that was created by Emma Frost that allowed him to tap into and control the Phoenix. If we look past that and we say, okay, let's skip forward to like 2006 with Civil War and let's use like MGH, right? Like mutant growth hormone. This is a drug that basically amplifies the powers of any mutant that comes across it, right? That uses it. That's how it is that Nitro managed to, to blow up Stamford, Connecticut is because he was on MGH, right? So like when he detonated, instead of creating like a smaller explosion like he normally did, he blew up an entire section of Stamford, Connecticut, like wiped the city off the map and that led to like deaths of tons of people. And so with that being the case, you turn around and you say, okay, like Mastermind's powers on their base level are able to like manipulate a whole city. Then you feed him MGH, the powers become more potent and they become more widespread, which means now he becomes a global threat and everything that everybody's seeing is an absolute truth. Like you have this guy who amplifies his powers and he's just like on this tanker somewhere and everyone in the world believes that like the Avengers are bad guys, right? Like everybody would believe that like Thanos came back. Captain America Falcon is Thanos and everybody else is like the Black Order, right? And so it's just like, okay, so like we have to take them out. So now the X-Men and, and like the Fantastic Four, assuming that they're there and all the superheroes just start like fighting against the Avengers, right? So like that starts to elevate Mastermind to becoming like a huge threat in the MCU. And that's why I say like the guy can go either way. If you if you do him the right way and if you give him the right kind of substance to amplify his powers, suddenly like he's a he's a threat for like multi, like like a like a Thanos level threat. Not so much in terms of like the full totality of the power he possesses, like blinking out half the life in the universe, but in terms of the threat he poses to like the superheroes on Earth, like he becomes a big time movie villain. This is the kind of character we're talking about. And this is why I say like Mastermind has been painfully underused by Marvel over the years, right? I mean, he's a he's a wildly powerful guy. He's usually used as like a plot device or just like a character who's there or like a henchman or something along those lines. But if, if somebody wrote him effectively and somebody gave him his due, the guy could could unleash hell on the entirety of, of Earth and Marvel. The only people who could really get around that, the only people who could really, really escape that, even if he used MGH, would be like high level reality warpers, right? So like Franklin Richards or or somebody like, like the Molecule Man, Owen Reese, or possibly Doctor Doom, depending on how advanced his magic is based on the story that's being told. A super high level telepath. So like probably Jean Grey is the Phoenix if she's around, assuming that she has like the full totality of the Phoenix's power. So she's like White Phoenix of the Crown. Charles Xavier, depending on how, his, uh, depending on how his story is being told. Uh, Emma Frost, again, depending on how her story is being told, because their powers fluctuate, right? Like how powerful they are as telepaths, Emma Frost and Xavier anyway, it fluctuates based on the story, right? Like Xavier was like more powerful than Emma Frost for a long time. And then you get to the events of Civil War and then Emma Frost is like, no, 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 I'm way more powerful than Xavier is, right? So, I mean, it, it gets it gets kind of crazy in terms of how their powers fluctuate and how they change and how they how they alter depending on, on what story is being told. Um, That also kind of begs the question, would Mastermind's powers work on Wolverine? Because as far as I'm aware, they're, they're I mean, it's, it's worked like a small portion, but not to a huge degree, right? Because if you go and you read the Dark Phoenix saga, when Mastermind uses his powers on like all the other X-Men and Jean Grey, by that point, Wolverine had been like knocked underground, right? Like he had been like knocked underground by, uh, by what's his name? The guy that can basically manipulate gravity, increase people's weight, essentially. And in turn, like Wolverine wasn't really subjected to the whole thing that everybody else was under the effect of Mastermind. So it's always been one of those things where Wolverine kind of escaped or Marvel tried to sort of dodge the question. I don't believe the two of them have ever fought, but again, like I could be wrong here. So it, it creates an interesting scenario. Somebody with like a healing factor or the ability to, to, to kind of avoid illusions. So somebody like, well, not really the Incredible Hulk because he was manipulated by Scarlet Witch in the MCU. Um, Wolverine, again, it's, it's kind of a finicky situation. Somebody like Deadpool, it wouldn't affect him because he like breaks the fourth wall. So he's like, no, 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 let me show you my reality. And it's like, there's people watching us right now. And then like Mastermind goes crazy and has like a total meltdown and dies. I mean, I have no idea. <laughs> but but again, he's a super powerful character. He's he's wildly capable. I would say he's a threat capable, you know, worthy of like an Avengers film in and of itself, right? Like a team up film between like the Avengers, Fantastic Four and the X-Men. I think he's worthy of that just because of the level of power he has. If it's pushed to the limits and if he's given the right way to amplify them. But with that being said, guys, we're gonna bring this video to an end. If you are new here to Comments Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps if you guys enjoy this video. 
up, make sure you drop a like, and I will catch you all later. Peace.